today on Film Lennon, where? Doing. This. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning good. And ever since the debut of The Umbrella Academy on Netflix a few weeks back, my request box has been absolutely full with this particular request. So a whole bunch of you requested on my streams and in the comments section a number five, I think it's a portal effect? So that's what we're doing today guys, and in order to complete this effect, it's actually pretty damn easy. All you need to do is just shoot your actor pretending to teleport into or out of an area and then just shoot a background plate without anybody in it. That's it. My God. Now I will say guys, that you can also shoot your actor on a green screen and just get the background plate. Now this actually does make the effect a little bit easier because you don't have to rotoscope them out of the shot, but you also avoid keying if you just rotoscope them out. So you just gotta weigh it up and see which one works for you. And that's it. This week there's no downloads, there's no fonts, there's no templates, there's no nothing. It's just two simple shots. Shoot your actor, get him out of the shot, shoot a background plate, or just shoot him on a green screen and get a background plate. Other than that, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got my shot set up in a comp here and ready to go. Now I wanna just point out that I do have two different shots set up for the tutorial. This one where I'm leaving the shot that we're gonna be working on today, and this sensual one over here, where I appear on the bed, just because I want y'all to see that shot again. Want your dreams, you know? Now the main reason is for that is that we have slightly different settings for exits and entries. Not crazy different, but enough that it requires an explanation. So let's see what we have back here. Firstly, we have our shot as I'm talking to the camera. If we scrub along, you can see that I back away from the camera. So I start a bit of movement. The shot is cut and we drop down to our background plate here underneath. Now in order to transition between these two shots and place our teleport effect, we have to make a cut of about 10 frames at the end of our actor clip here and isolate those eight or 10 frames. So let's head to the end of that clip right here. Then we're gonna count back eight to 10 frames or so. And there we go. And then I'm gonna hit Control Shift D to split the clip. Let's now isolate the small clip by right clicking and pre-composing it, making sure all attributes are moved into the new composition and let's name it Exit. We'll hit OK. Once we've done that, it's time to open up that pre-comp and we're going to rotoscope the actor out from the background. Now guys, I'm gonna save you the boredom of watching me do this because I've covered how to roto in many episodes now, so there's no point in repeating myself. So I'm just gonna cut to it being done. There we go. Now guys, if you wanna roto in Mocha or you wanna roto natively in After Effects, totally up to you, so just go nuts. Well, and next step is to draw some masks to facilitate our actor looking like he's teleporting. Now this technique isn't too different to my two phasing effects that I have on the channel, the zoom phasing effect and the vision phasing effect, but let's go ahead and explain it anyway. The idea here is to grab the pen tool and choose a few key areas on the actor's body to mask out. Basically, you're choosing which body parts go through the teleport phase first. In my case, since I'm backing up, I want parts of my back and maybe this arm to go through first. And I also want to keep this front arm in the shot a little bit longer. That'll be the last thing that goes through. So what I'm actually going to do is duplicate the pre-comp and mask out my hand and isolate that on its own. That way I'll be able to remove my legs and torso behind the arm while the arm still stays in the shot. So let's head back to the lower pre-comp and mask say the head and maybe here and maybe here. All the while we're changing the mask mode to subtract. Okay, done. Just looks like my actors had a few bites taken out of it. Yeah, damn sandwich took a bite out of me, see? Now, we have to animate these masks via mask expansion. So let's hit MM on the keyboard to collapse down the mask menu, and it's here you're gonna find mask expansion. Now what we wanna do here, guys, is head to the first frame of our pre-comp, maybe lower the mask expansion to just minimize them. We'll then hit the stopwatch on each of them,
and we can now skip ahead one or two frames, increasing that mask expansion so that it resembles the act of phasing away. Keep going frame by frame for anywhere from five to seven frames until your actor is completely gone. Now I did do a little bit of an oopsie here guys and I'm just gonna fix it. I'm actually changing the transfer mode on the head mask to add because I wanna keep the head in the shot as long as possible. Now just to fill up the awkward silence here, I'm just doing a little bit more farting around and finalizing our teleport effect, which you can see looks like this. Now guys, we wanna soften this up a little bit so what we're going to do is hit F and we're going to feather all those masks around 25 pixels. Much better. Now I will also uh, just say you can totally do this by animating the mask path. It's just animating the mask expansion. It's just a little bit less work. Now I've also repeated this mask expansion animation with my hand pre-comp above and what you're left with is this. Okay, now that is actually the hard bit, gang. Everything now is way easier as we're just layering effects around what we've done here. Next step, we need to add some displacement to the background. Now we can do this actually by using our actor pre-comp, but before we do that, I'm gonna select our background plate layer, pre-compose it, and move all attributes into a new comp. This just ensures that a displacement doesn't do anything funky. Now, if you're one of those people that made more than one layer to separate parts of your body out of the phasing, we'll need to consolidate those masks into one comp. So what I'm gonna do is select my exit comps right here, and I'm just gonna pre-compose them and call it, say, exits. And of course, move all attributes into new composition and click OK. Now we've got one universal piece for our displacement map. Now, following that, let's head to the project window here and we're gonna select their exit comp and we're gonna duplicate it. Let's now grab exit two from the project menu and drop it into our final comp and turn it off because we don't need to see that. It's kinda ugly. From there, let's open up that duplicated comp that's called exit two and we'll add a new adjustment layer. Let's add some stuff. Firstly, we'll head to effect, color correction and add a tint. Next, let's also add a brightness and contrast and crank both of those right up to their maximum. And there we go. Lastly, we're gonna head back up, head to blur and sharpen, and let's check repeat edge pixels. And we're gonna crank that amount up to around 30. Now this blurry son of a gun right here is gonna be driving our displacement effect. So forget about it and let's head back to the final comp. From there, let's select our background layer, head to effect, distort, and grab a displacement map. Let's set our exit two as the source layer, set both channels to luminance, and crank the top field up to 200, and the lower field to 100. Make sure you also check wrap pixels around, just to remove any banding you might get from the edges tearing. Let's then duplicate this effect once more, only this time, we're gonna halve those values. So, we're gonna set it to 150. Then we're gonna duplicate it once more and halve those values yet again. So set it to 50, set it to 25. If we check out a preview, you can see the displacement warping around the actor as I fade out. The reason we have three iterations is I really just wanted to give the displacement a little bit more detail and make it a bit more complex. So it starts wide, gets narrower, gets narrow again. So we've got three layers, kind of like, you know, rings around a tree. Now next, we want to enhance that a little bit more. So let's head up, add an adjustment layer, and make sure it's on top of our background layer. We'll then draw a rough mask around the shape of our actor. There we go. Then we're gonna feather that out anywhere from 75 to 100 pixels. From there, we want to head to effect, stylize, and add CC glass. Let's drop down the surface menu and set the bump map to our exit one comp. Set the softness to 30, the height to 100, we can then drop down the light menu and crank that light intensity all the way up to 235. Lastly, let's change that light color to a nice pale blue. And that works pretty well. Now, since the actor is getting smaller in the shot as they teleport away, so doth this effect. So gang, 
Let's collapse down the mask menu and hit the stopwatch on mask expansion. Head to the point where our actor is off screen right here and let's shrink that mask down until it's gone. You can also animate the mask path if you want to be a little bit more accurate here guys. I'm just doing the mask expansion for the speed of the tutorial. Oh, now I almost forgot one thing guys. We need to head back up to the CC glass and set the property to alpha. That way it'll actually use the masks that we spent all that time on as the driving force behind the uh, displacement. Much better. Now, this is looking pretty good, but I hear you ask, what about the glow around the actor? What about it, Grant? What about it? Well, just, just sit, settle down, okay? I'm on it, son. So let's select our exit one comp, head to effect, stylize, and add a glow. We'll set the glow based on to alpha, That'll just banish it to the edges. And since we don't want it everywhere universally around the actor, we're going to crank the threshold up to around 95%. Let's then soften that glow by setting the radius to 97, up the intensity to say two, and then we're gonna select the composite original to be on top. This is gonna place the glow behind our actor. Let's then set the glow operation to screen to lower the harshness. Then we're gonna set the colors to A and B colors and change that white to the same pale blue we set our CC glass to. Done. Okay gang, one last step here. I'm gonna add some light rays just to give some areas a little flash of light as kind of a punch to the effect. To do that, we head to effect, generate and grab CC light rays. Now all you have to do is just place these bad boys over a spot on your actor's glow like so. Mm, that's good. You can add as many of these as you like, but just don't go overboard. The end result looks like this, a flash of light as your actor fades away. Cool, huh? Now gang, be sure and have a play with the intensity, the warp softness, and you might even want to animate that center point of the light rays, but find a result that works for you. Okay, now the final step is pretty simple, guys. All we're gonna do is grab a new adjustment layer and pop it down on top of our background. Then let's head to effect, distort and add a bulge. We're then gonna crank up the size to a range that works for your shot. This looks pretty good to me. We'll then set the height to zero, taper the radius to say 28, just to soften a touch, and set the center to the center of my actor. We're then gonna hit the stopwatch on height just before our actor begins to teleport, head to the midpoint of the teleport and crank it up to say 0.5. You don't wanna crank this up too high because it's really, really harsh. We can then skip ahead a few frames after your actor is gone, set it back down to 0.1. Let's then skip ahead one more frame, set it to zero. Skip ahead around two more frames, set it back up to 0.1. There we go. And then skip ahead three frames and then finally crank it back down to zero. This is gonna create a little bounce as our bulge closes. In fact, if we check out a preview, you can see our actor goes bloop, and then we get this cool, bulgy, bouncy ripple, sort of like, I don't know, time and space has been altered, so it just goes bloop. Okay, that shot is all done now. Let's quickly talk about an arrival shot and the slight differences, guys. So, we'll click over to that one. And yes, there's that shot of me on the bed again. Now, I've had a few comments uh, on the, the community post that that is my underwear. It isn't, it's my pajamas and I'm offended by that, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> so here's the differences, guys, just moving on from that. Starting with our glow. As our actor appears, we need to get rid of that glow. So all it's done here is we're just animating the intensity of our glow to drop to zero once our actor fully appears. You can see the keyframe right here. Just over the course of five frames or so, our glow is animated from a glow of 2.0 down to zero. Pretty basic, right? Following on from that, let's head to our CC glass displacement. All I've done is simply animate the opacity of that layer to fade away as our actor appears. Pretty basic stuff. And finally, on our background layer, you can see that I've hit the stopwatch on both fields of our displacement effects in all three iterations, and basically, I'm just animating the displacement all the way down to zero. So, pretty much the exact same thing on all three of these things. So our glow animates down to zero, our glass displacement, the opacity just goes down to zero, and then our displacement map goes down to zero once the actor is fully materialized in the shot. That's it. 
And that, my friends, is another effect. Mmm, done. That doesn't really work with that shot. Or does it? Now guys, I know I ended the tutorial, but I just wanted to mention one thing. In a couple of the shots in the Umbrella Academy, when number five is teleporting, he does have this weird sort of halo around his body parts, and it's only for maybe one or two frames in each of these teleports, but I just wanted to show you a quick and easy way of doing that. All I've done is just add a new black solid and copied a couple of those animated masks from our teleport effect onto that black solid. From there, all I've done is just head to Video Copod and add Saber and set that to Layer Masks and grab, I think, the Patronus one of these presets. And I've just animated that to be on for one to two frames and then pop off. That's as easy as it is, guys. You can just designate it to whatever frame you like and it's done. If you'd like me to talk more about this, I'll just do it on one of the live streams next week. But let me know in the comment section. Out of all those steps, and you get something like this. Today on Film Learning, where? Doing. This. So guys, that's my take on the Umbrella Academy number five portal effect. I still don't know what to call it. As you can see, once you get over that hump of rotoscoping your actor out of the shot, it's actually a pretty easy process to apply this effect. And once you've got that first shot built up, it's very easy to just copy and paste those effects onto your next shot, and then the next shot, and the next shot, and so on. I mean, you get the idea, right? But for now, guys, that's all I've got for you. I'm going to be heading to the Google HQ at the end of the week to do my pitch to these movie studios for collaboration videos. I am super excited to do that. So you won't see me for about a week and a half, but when I get back, we're going to have some film learning goodness. Whatever that means. But as always, guys, if you did enjoy this episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it, and I mean really do appreciate it. And hey, if you aren't here, hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got my social media crap above my head. Feel free to follow me on the Twitter and the Instagram and the Facebook. Yeah, yeah, that's still there. And then, if you want to, you can support us on Patreon by clicking the link. And if you want to support us directly on YouTube, just hit that join button below. But until I see you again, guys, keep learning.